okay, what, what, how does God exist? Because that's existence within reality, and we're talking about something that we've already defined as transcending reality. Okay, could you answer the question, though? Can you have a third option, either conceptual existence or physical existence? Is there a third option that you're aware of? I'm not aware of any other. Please correct me. Maybe I just don't know. I haven't read enough. Um, what I'm asking is about what you mean when you say exists, because when we talk about exists... That which is. We're talking about essentially um, within the bounds of, of, of reality, and that includes concepts. There you go. Concepts and physical um, but, nature. But that existence is subject to those absolutes, which is why we agreed in the first place that they are transcendent, that they are not contingent upon any matter, any space, or any time. The flaw here, one of the, one of the other flaws that I didn't quite get to address is in the bigger scope of the, of the argument, which is you're asking why are the laws of absolute what they are? And why is a question regarding causality? And causality is necessarily temporal, and we have already excluded something because we're talking about something that transcends time. You're asking something that is essentially nonsense. No. Okay, well, that's we, the best answer we, I've ever heard. If we only have two possibilities to account for something, I'm not saying there's only if, two in this if. situation. I'm saying if there is. I agree. If you, only, if you only have two and one of them is negated, then the other one is validated automatically. And, and prove to me that there are only two possibilities, because the only thing you've done so far is say, I only can think of two, can you think of others? You haven't proved that there are only two. I don't know of any other. And I'm, I'm with you. You're, you're being correct here. They haven't yeah, proven right. that there's... You haven't proven that there's any other, but this, this is it. There is either the physical and non-physical, either conceptual or non-conceptual. You also are required to offer me a third option. If I say these are the two options, I'm not required to prove the exclusion of all others, because it would be like you saying, don't ask me to prove God does not exist. I'm asking you to demonstrate what does exist, a third option. Uh, if already... you don't have a third option, then you cannot say that the... Uh, logical absolutes are not conceptual. You could say they are, but you cannot logically hold to that position if you cannot give me rationally a third option. Is a third no, option I don't need a third option, option because I went with the second option. The option was they were either conceptual or not conceptual, and I'm going with not conceptual because conceptual and makes them physical. Because con no, no, because what, what's the third option? Conceptual makes them contingent upon thought. That's the what, problem. What's the third option? You're, you're asking for what's the third option between two things that aren't two options of this, uh, uh, where there's a third or a fourth. Um, it's like I'm saying I'm, I'm the saying third. they're either red or blue, and you're, you're saying, uh, or and you're saying, okay, it's not red and it's not apple. So what is it? That's what That's you're doing. Category mistake. Category mistake. I'm not doing that. If there are only two possibilities, give me a third possibility. In all seriousness, I'm not angry. I'm not. I'm, I'm curious. Is there a third possibility? Conceptual reality. I don't. Ex reality. I don't accept your premise that the two possibilities. That 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 the, the, the I, what I said was something is either conceptual or not conceptual, and you said that non-conceptual equates to physical, and I'm saying that this is one of those things, maybe the only thing, whatever, oh. um, that is not conceptual, that is also then what is not it? physical. It is. You can't offer me a third option. Logic requires the third option. Things, the third option no, is neither. 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 It is neither conceptual nor physical. So you jump into nothingness to defend your position? No, I'm yes. saying they neither. are what they are. This is an essential. And now, What's and now, nonsense? and now, and now, Matt. After 45 minutes or so, um, I can't count the number of times I've repeated this. Um, so we're going to stop because there are other callers, there are callers that are on hold, um, and I'll be more than happy to talk about this more in email, or you can call in another time. For those that are interested, you can go to karm.org. The website's actually listed up on the corner of your screen. Well, um, call me up. Call my show. Okay. I have a radio show five days a week in the Boise area, streamed over the Internet. We can talk about this. And if you come up with a third option, let me know. I'd love I, to hear it. What I, it? I, I'm, just, I just, I'm not necessarily sure what, what the purpose of that would be because, because, oh, yeah. because I identified a fallacy of structure in 6.1, and your only response is, no, it's not. 
No, that's not and, 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 oh, I'm sorry, that's not your only response. Your second response was, you need to give me another option. Uh, no. No, I don't. The nature, the nature of the, no, I'm sorry, I'm putting your ass on hold now because I want to get this out and I want to move on. Uh, thanks for the call, Matt, and, and I, we can talk about it another time. The nature of a syllogism is that you can know that it is unsound without necessarily knowing which premise is flawed or whether the structure is valid. And go look up reducto ad absurdum if you need to. I don't need to know what all the other options are to know that this option is not correct, to know that this is flawed, to know that there's an, a, an invalid structure in here. There's about 18 different spots where this particular argument was wrong, and, 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 and I'll admit, uh, I'm sure there are people out there who are face-palming and pounding their head against the wall, and I'm sure there are people who are screaming, no, 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 Matt, you're wrong, and no, 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 Matt, you're wrong. Um, if you actually go to the site and read through the argument, and, and Russell and I looked this over during the week, um, this week. There are clear spots where the scope of what you're talking about changes. And uh, it's, I can't, I don't know another way to express this other than to say when we're talking about A, and then you talk about A1 and say that it's A, I can't well, get there. I have a, I guess anyway, a question. Anyway, yeah, you haven't talked at well, all. Well, no, so, I but. have a question about what you were just talking about. It seems to me that concept, concept, mm -hmm. in my mind, is based on experiential reality. Like, my concepts can only come from my experiential, my experiences with reality. Generally, I mean, there might be exceptions. I'm not averse to having exceptions. But in general, I conceive of things based on, you know, what I know, what I've learned, how I interact with reality. And unless something's wrong with my brain, I conceive of things based on what I am. Like, this is soft. You know, this is whatever. I, the apple is red. I mean, I conceive based on what I perceive and also how I think about it in a lot of ways, the way I was raised. or you know. So you make observations about things around you. Yeah. Now, I understand that the absolutes transcend my reality, my universe, or whatever. But at the same time, my experience with reality thus far is that it is an attribute of all things that they are what they are and they're not what they're not. And if they're not anything, like the empty jar, like the non-existent die, are non-existent die, and they're not not non-existent die. Yeah, the, the, the so thing is that I'm that's saying, a bit of induction. But that's because I've seen this so many times, it seems to be like a right, good rule of right. thinking. Now, the thing about these laws being absolutes is that the laws themselves can be subject, like A equals A. Right. You can take A equals A equals A equals A. Right. And I realize it's probably confusing to me. What, what they mean is they apply to themselves. Right. They are what they are. They are tautologies. Right. They are right. necessarily themselves. So to me, even though I can conceive of the concept A equals A, mm -hmm. for myself as just the small human that I am, it is just simply based on everything I've ever seen that adheres to this. Yeah. And then the idea of saying it's transcendent would be, you know, I can't really think of any kind of universe or situation or time or anything that would impact where this wouldn't be true, or where this wouldn't be correct, or where this wouldn't be the case, or where this wouldn't be the nature of whatever is or isn't there. And so it seems to me that, that it is a concept that's based on an observation of simply saying everything I know works this way, and you know what, I can't even think of how it wouldn't work this way. So yeah. it is an operator that exists in the physical reality, but it also would exist even if there wasn't a physical reality, because it's just that kind of an operator that applies to absolutely anything, whether it is or isn't. Yeah, it's. It might be fair to say that it. That 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 this. Law. Um, it's an observation on reality, or or on any reality. Yeah, but the, the problem with saying that, though, is that now you've tied it to an observation, that you've tied it to... No, the observation is my conceptualization of what I'm yes. experiencing, and, but it's and, there. Well, I mean, it's... it's this. this this goes beyond what you're actually experiencing, but okay. anyway... Um, well, yeah, it does, but I'm just saying that the reason I would conceive of it is because everything I experience adheres to that, but everything but that I... that's an induction, and, and that's not what this is. The well, concept, though, is... The concept is our... Right. Yes. Yeah. But what I'm saying is the concept is based on what I, I mean, I get the concept from what I observe. 
But then what I can realize beyond that, what can I extrapolate beyond that, is that even things I couldn't observe, anything right. I could possibly yeah. make up, this would apply to. Yeah. And so and it applies to itself. I think that in our minds, the concept does derive from reality, from physical reality. But that doesn't mean that it wouldn't apply to any kind of abstraction. It could. He, he's talk, he, his question, though, is about the, the actual thing that we're talking about. It's not a thing. It's an observation. Well, yes on something that is a quality of every single thing that is or isn't. It, but it's, yes, it is a, a quality. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. We, we got callers waiting, and I'm okay. pretty sure that <laughs> right. there's going to be mail that I just don't right. even want to look at this week. But, and, and we'll see. Maybe Matt will be back on the show at some point to talk about something else. Maybe he won't. Maybe that was more than enough for any of us.